and I had a positive pregnancy test one morning. Um, yeah, I remember that. Came in and told Tom that we were going to be having baby number three, and mm -hmm. it was a little, a little scary just to think about having three and how that was going to change our dynamics. And but we were prepared. We've been through oh, it twice yeah. before, so. No, I was thought, pretty excited about it, honestly, because yeah. I remember she came in and said it, or told me in the morning about it, and. Uh, I was like, all right. My profession is, I am an ultrasound technician, and I was at work, and of course, we take a look at our babies, and you know, is the heart still beating, that kind of thing, and I was probably about 14 weeks along, and I was scanning Molly, and I thought, you know, I just can't get a four-chamber heart, and I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, it's early, you know, maybe things aren't just quite developed yet, but I was fretting. The Fetal Concerns Program is about helping families know expecting babies that have prenatally diagnosed birth defects. That could be anything from a cardiac defect that is repairable or non-repairable to an abdominal wall defect to club feet, a cleft lip, um, a, a lethal chromosome abnormality, or even some type of syndrome. It is my role as one of the Fetal Concerns nurses to take this family by the hand and guide them throughout the pregnancy, not only to provide them with the medical information about their unborn baby, but to provide them with emotional support, spiritual support, and physical support. I was able to meet Tara and Tom at about 22 weeks along in the pregnancy, and at this time they had their initial heart scan at our institution, and this is where we confirmed their diagnosis. And then that's when she kind of said there really was not even much of a of a third, you know, there's really about only two chambers of the heart then. And that's where she Things saw the intact atrial septum. There wasn't a hole in that top chamber. And babies that have hypoplastic left heart, they need that blood to be able to shunt back from the lungs when they're born. And she didn't have that normal, normal hole. hole. So um, that point, she it was a pretty grim outlook. So we spent the day together. We cried a lot. We laughed a lot. We, um, she talked a lot about what it was that they will be doing or, or the decisions they're going to have to make. How can I carry this baby knowing it's going to die? That was very difficult for me. Very, very difficult. And the kids already knew what we were expecting. And, you know, how are we going to explain it to them that their baby sister isn't going to live? And uh, that was something that, that was one of the most difficult things for me. I think the entire duration of that pregnancy was a roller coaster ride for them. And so it was my job to reassure them that whatever they decided, we were going to be there for them. The first time I saw her, um, it's instant love, that love when you have your child. It's, I don't know how to explain how it happens. You just love that person. It just happens. And it was the same feeling I had when Owen and Ellie were born. I loved her instantly. She surprised us, and she lived for 12 hours. She was never you know, in any pain or discomfort. She just was very relaxed and she was held the entire time. Yep. The entire 12, 12 hours, hours she was in someone's arm. She was never put down. I wouldn't change anything about that day if I had to do it, you know, unfortunately I have to do something like this again. Um, it's bittersweet, you know. It was great that we got to meet our daughter. Mm -hmm. Sad that it ends the way it does, but you know, with the things that they were able to provide us for memories and stuff like that, it helps out a, a tremendous amount.